A little while ago, I was at a friend's house and he switched on the TV. It was about seven o'clock and the channel was BBC One. Without knowing it, we had tuned into an episode of EastEnders. Immediately, we were drawn into a family home and placed where right in the front of us, there were two individuals ripping each other's character apart. They were enraged with anger, red-faced, cheeks sucked in, eyes flared, their necks were bulging out. The spectators to this argument in the home seemed just as furious and were throwing in remarks to stoke the fire. It was a horrible sight. And quickly, we changed the channel. Maybe you think that is an exaggeration, but there is certainly a lot of truth in that statement. The way we live now reflects how we are going to spend eternity. Our habits and our actions transform us either into people ready to live the life of heaven or otherwise individuals only fit for the company of the devils and the souls of the damned in hell. It's a bit like this life is a place for getting acclimatized. Sometimes athletes train at a high altitude in order to get acclimatized for a competition that's also on a higher altitude. Their bodies need to be prepared, trained, so they can cope and compete in an environment different from their usual one. No one can go from living in a place at a low altitude and then all of a sudden be thousands of meters above sea level. That change is going to have serious health consequences. It's the same in our preparation for eternity. Are you getting acclimatized for heaven? Or is your life more like getting acclimatized for hell? Inside, in a very secret way, our acts are molding each one of us either into the saints, ready to live the life of heaven, or into monsters. Individuals preparing themselves, disposing themselves for the company of the devils and the damned. I want us to go through the seven deadly sins and think about how each one affects the human character, affects your character, my character. Are you preparing yourself for heaven or for hell? When we examine the list of the seven deadly sins, pride, lust, anger, covetousness, envy, sloth, gluttony, it's obvious that some of these seven deadly sins won't exist in hell at all. Four, in fact, four of the deadly sins uh, won't be in hell. The poor souls in hell won't be bothered with lust, with sloth, with gluttony, or with covetousness. These things won't be an issue for them anymore. But in this life, the damage of these four sins, lust, sloth, gluttony, covetousness, is that they actually stop you from thinking about eternity. They stop you preparing for the next life. Covetousness, for example, the desire to have more and more possessions, this sin blinds the individual to the fact that all this material property, cars, houses, money, honours, degrees, all these things will end with the grave. The same is true for gluttony, the obsession for pleasures of taste. This can look, cause a person to live as if worldly feasting can last forever. It distracts a person from really focusing his soul on God and being at rights with him. Last also, it makes the individual focused on only one aspect of life, impure pleasures that are passing. Giving in to lust is probably the fastest route to atheism because this sin brings about a smoke screen which prevents the light of God reaching into that person's life. It clouds out God because the mind is completely fixated on sensual pleasure. Sloth also stops the soul rising from earthly things to God. That's obvious. Someone overcome with sloth chooses to forget about eternity through sheer inactivity and laziness. As I said, these four of the deadly sins don't exist in hell because the souls in hell at least to begin with, don't have bodies. They don't have opportunity to acquire material things. They can't rest. 
they can't eat, and they are too preoccupied with pain to have any impure feelings about anyone around them. Imagine that, they are all naked, but impurity is no issue for them because they are in pain. The other three deadly sins, anger, envy, and pride, well, they are found in the next life. They are spiritual sins, and even those without bodies can be plagued by them. The devil and his minions, for example, they don't have lust, gluttony, sloth, or covetousness, but each one is filled with anger, envy, and pride. The devils are angry with each other. They're angry with God. They're angry with him, the one they've disobeyed. They are angry with the people who've resisted their temptations. They are angry, above all, with themselves. They're having chosen to lose everything. Hell is a place full of anger, full of squabbling, full of hatred, full of animosities. Heaven is the opposite. Heaven is full of meekness, gentleness, letting the other go first. It's full of kind words and forgiveness of the wrongs the forgiveness of the wrongs of their of their life on earth think about your relationships are they characterized by meekness or by anger is your family home like something out of a soap opera like it's out of eastenders are there any people that you have hatred and open hostility towards is there anybody that you cannot or will not even try to forgive you can't take unforgiveness to heaven. It can't get in there. You can't take family feuds or hatred of your neighbor into heaven. These things belong to the company below. It's a bit like as you're going into heaven. If you've cultivated these negative vices, the alarm sounds, you can't enter there. Your habit is incompatible with the style of life in heaven and it's in this life we need to prepare ourselves with meekness and goodness so that when we get to those gates the alarm doesn't sound you will be fit for the company of heaven the devils are filled with envy they envy me and you who are alive at this moment and have a chance to get to heaven they envy each other perhaps for their different degrees of intelligence they envy the saints who chose the right path. The envy of the devils is the reason that they continue to tempt us. They want us to be as miserable as they are. Hell is full of envy. Heaven is the opposite. Heaven is full of kindness. The souls in heaven delight in the fact that they have had different gifts and talents in this life. They rejoice in each other's strengths and even their weaknesses. And they are full of charity to us who are still here on earth. And they pray for us. They want to help us. They ask God to give us graces and for him to help us so that we can make it to be with them. You can't take envy with you into heaven. It won't get through the security. If you die filled with envy and without having confessed your struggles against this vice and having asked God for help, then that envy will fit you in nicely with the company of the devils. It's by practicing kindness to each other that we become more like the company of the saints, even here and now. Finally, the devils are filled with pride. That is their greatest sin. Each one of them is completely self-centered. They will not worship God. They will not bow down to him as their creator. They are self-absorbed. And even now, whilst they are suffering from being away from God, they refuse to admit their need of him and that they did wrong in offending him. I have met so many people in my life that say, I, do, I never do any wrong to anybody. Often when I'm going up to people, asking them to make a good confession, maybe on home to home, these individuals say they've never done anything wrong to anyone. But those individuals often have no regard for Almighty God. And by the sin of pride, they are preparing themselves to join the devils. Heaven is filled with humility. 
And so should our lives. We should be humble and courteous to one another and above all, humble before our loving Creator God who sustains us and is with us at all times, offering graces we don't deserve and forgiveness. Forgiveness whenever we return to him and if it's a mortal sin through the sacrament of confession. This life is a preparation for eternity. It's a bit like a test run, a time for getting acclimatized, getting used to how we are eventually going to be living for the rest of eternity. Four of the deadly sins, they stop us from remembering that fact at all. They stop us from realizing there is an eternity, that our souls are going to be judged and that we are going to be in heaven or hell forever, as long as God will be God. And then those other three, pride, anger and envy, they transform us to make us more like demons than the sons, daughters of God that we are called to be in Christ. They acclimatize us for hell. My friends, treat each day as a test run for eternity, a boot camp for the kingdom of heaven. Live like the saints right now, full of forgiveness, full of meekness, full of kindness, full of humility towards God and charity towards your neighbor. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.